I'm told I don't hear that well anymore, and you say you don't see that well. <laughs> Anyhow, Rex was a, a Tacoma attorney, and I remember him uh, coming to some of the parties, and I could tell you about some of these parties, and he wasn't really as welcome as was Audie Frazier and Vera and the, and the big old crowd that had these parties. They would have talent coming for the weekend, opera singer, poet, I don't know any number of things. And they would, party would start Friday afternoon at somebody's house. It would proceed after early afternoon to someone else's house on Saturday with the, the star always uh, performing in front of somebody's fireplace like this. And the party would end up late Sunday afternoon. Those were parties. Uh, a fixture of the parties would be Harry Snyder, our one and only policeman, his motorcycle, his sidecar. He would be stationed at the gate. He would know everybody who was invited personally. He would let only those people in. If any uh, government types came in, Harry would say, I got it all under control, and send them away. <laughs> I remember Harry Snyder very well, a nice, nice man, and lots of the kids got to ride in his sidecar. I never realized how many bugs there were in the air until I had a ride. <laughs> so they bought the building in back on Market Street, and they put this bridge in, and the, the first two, lower two floors were for the public to go from one store to the other. The top floor was the offices. And on the left, we have the ice cream store. Mr. Robbins, an astute businessman, with that little store, sent his daughters Elka and Shirley to Andy Wright Seminary and on to college. And if I'm not mistaken, that name lingers on in the ice cream business here is Baskin and Robbins. Doesn't it? Does somebody know? I think so. I think Is that the same Robbins? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Oh. They used to have school chairs. So you could sit there and put your milkshake on it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, behind the riding yard? They lived in our, our neighborhood. When we were kids. That was the best place to go for Halloween because we always got a Dixie cup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my dad during the Depression said that he, for a nickel, he could get all the buttermilk he could drink. And if he was feeling really poor that month, that's what he had. A big load of buttermilk to be funny getting through for dinner. The staff. We always have to have a staff picture. I was looking for Emil Schultz in there because Emil has told me things about the store that should never be repeated. <laughs> uh, I just love these pictures of the coffee because it was and tea department. It was so important to Henry. He said it always it was a good money maker. What are those bottles there? I was looking at those. I couldn't quite read the label, but uh, it wasn't bonded whiskey, I'm quite sure. If it were whiskey, it would be before prohibition. So, yeah, it could be, couldn't it? They're huge. When did prohibition start? Who remembers? 1919? 1919. Yeah, okay. Still. So, that might date this picture. Uh, I think I think we got it. <laughs> the crockery. That was the keynote department because they didn't make much money on it, but it lent class to the store. And the dresses. And I looked at this picture this afternoon, and I could remember the store didn't change all that much, and I spent more time waiting for my mother and aunt who were in the fitting rooms. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Did you go to the toy department? No, I sat where I was told. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would have. I would. Yeah. Well, here's Foster and Kleiser. Uh, the manager locally here was Lyle Abrahamson, who married uh, Alva, Alva Neeland. Uh, sister of Mitch Fogg, and those two ladies were the ones that really sparked the parties out here. <laughs> All roads lead to roads, two miles that way. Well, we had those signs all over the country for hundreds of miles, and the, the 
farthest one out is this, this one, I think. <laughs> well, it's Christmas, and Santa Claus's helpers have their delivery cars all lined up there. And I suppose this is Armistice Day, 1918. You know, the top two Henry had built paid for himself. Now, he was president of the Rear National Park Company, and he was in many other things, like the Chamber of Commerce. And he, he had this wonderful display in the store window downtown. And the kids were invited to come and see Santa Claus. I can't remember a thing about it. It's gone from my memory. I can see why. <laughs> now, this is another very big event. They, they bought cash registers. Now, until they, before they had cash registers, it was the system where you put the money in the slip in the basket and go like this. Well, they also had a pneumatic tube system, but that was when I came uh, almost too late to benefit from this. But they got cash registers, and each department had its own register, and it was a department store that worked separately. I think. And he took great pride in having good managers in his departments and having them all make money. Ed Rhodes, whose house was right there, he seemed to be a wonderful young man, and he was killed out in France in World War I. And the family suffered from that a great, great deal because they were counting on Ed to take over the store. And that wasn't the only reason. He was just a neat guy. And so they sold the store in 1924. And Henry was no longer a merchant, but he was itching to get going again. So he got his son-in-law, Audie Fraser, to front to head up the store. And Henry was the, the financier and the guy that told him what would sell and what wouldn't. And so Fraser's was downtown a quality store. And and out here, they were at Lakewood Center for a while. Berdella. Uh, these, from here on, these are pictures that I just got yesterday. <coughs> There's a nice portrait of Berdella. And Henry. I don't know if any of you have seen the dreadful picture in his obituary. Oh, he looks like the sourest old guy you ever saw. And he wasn't. Little look at the front of the house when the house was almost new. V and Judy. Uh, Alice and V out in the rowboat and Berdella washing on shore. This is Vera Fraser, Vera Rose Fraser, and Judy. Right? Okay. <coughs> Uh, we got this in a Christmas card one year. Some of these pictures are mine in the last few. Uh, they're singing Christmas carols out on the porch. There's Alice sitting on the large one, and V standing, and Judy sitting. Uh, another little picture. Uh, tell me again who the man is, that's Mr. Fraser's brother. Captain Ed Henry C. Henry. And he married, he married? Fraser's. Yeah, well, Audie Fraser's uh, sister. Sister, yeah. yeah. And he was an artist as well as a sea captain. So we have Alice, V, and Judy. And here's another family group with Henry with his arm around his daughter, Vera. <laughs> Alice. And this is the only picture I have of Audie. He's uh, conspicuous by his absence in most of the pictures. In fact, he's the one that took a lot of the pictures. So, And there's V looking as exotic as ever. Don Brown and who's this? Elizabeth. Elizabeth Rose. 
was Kennedy. Well, that's, that, that was Ed's Ed daughter. Ed, Ed, Ed was killed in World War One. She's his daughter. Oh, that's Ed's daughter. She okay, well, she passed away. She lived on Veterans Drive, Drive for many years. Taught piano. What was her last name? Uh, well, it was Kennedy. I didn't her mom remarry, I think, after Ed was killed in the war, and then maybe that's when Kennedy came in. Mm -hmm. And then she married uh, someone named Jolly. Okay. And I think she went to the University of Puget Sound, where she was a music major, and she was a hot piano. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And the glamorous Judy, and somebody with her head down. That's <laughs> Randall David Sandal. Oh, is it? Your mother? Yes, Henry's mom. She never looked that way. Probably sick. Huh? <laughs> 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 Wasn't she a buyer for the story? Yeah, she did that. She, uh, here's one I noted that uh, Audie took. It's in Audie's house. You know everybody there? Yeah. <laughs> and another one. Here he's having trouble with his flash going off in the mirror behind him. Yeah, well, anyway. I couldn't resist this one. I think this must be V. And who? It's Judy. It's Judy, okay. <laughs> nice knees on Judy. <laughs> Okay. 